Okay, it is Friday afternoon. The let's see, today is the eighth, uh, eighth of uh, April, and Adio was here with me, and we're ready to start the seventh psalm. And Adio has agreed to read the first nine verses, and I'll read the final eight verses, and then we'll make some comments about this. Um, glad to have you with me this afternoon, Adio. I'll turn it over to you. Uh, no problem. So, just for those who are listening, we did a get pray before we started the recording. So, uh, now I'm going to read Psalm 7, verses 1 to 8, and literally the rest. O Lord, my God, in thee do I put my trust. Save me from all them that persecute me and deliver me. Lest he tear my soul like a lion, ranting in pieces while there is none to deliver. O Lord my God, I if I done this, if there be iniquity in my hands, if I have rewarded evil unto him that was at peace with me, ye, all in brackets, I have delivered them, him that was without cause is my enemy. Let the enemy persecute my soul and take it, ye let him spread down my land upon the earth and lay my honor in the dust. Be lost. Arise, O Lord, in the in, in thy anger, lift up because of my rage of my enemies, and awake from me to the judgment that thou hast commanded. So shall the congregation of the people come past thee for their sakes, their return, O on high. The Lord shall judge the people. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness, according to my integrity that is in me. Okay, and so I'll continue in verse 9. Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just, for the righteous God trieth the hearts and reigns. My defense is of God, which saveth the upright in heart. God judges the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. If he turn not, he will wet his sword. He hath bent his bow and made it ready. He hath also prepared for him the instruments of death. He ordained his arrows against the persecutors. Behold, the tr he travaileth with iniquity and hath conceived mischief and brought forth falsehood. He made a pit and digged it and has fallen into the ditch which he made. His mischief shall return upon his own head, and his violent dealing shall come down upon his own pate. I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness, and will sing praises, praise to the name of the Lord Most High. Well, um, I'll make a few comments, and then I'll turn it back over to Adiola. Um The first verse, you know, is replicated throughout the Psalms, the same message. In fact, uh, there's a Psalm in the 31st Psalm. I'll look at that real quick. Back in the 31st Psalm, the fifth verse, it says, um, hold on a second, let me get back there. Thirty first Psalm, fifth verse says, Into thine hand I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. Now I'm gonna shut my video off too so I don't get so I can pay attention to what I'm doing here. So um this theme about crying out to God uh is really found throughout the psalm we see in the fourth psalm he says hear me when i call O god um psalm 5 give ear to my words O lord um 
Psalm 6, have mercy upon me, O Lord. And so this is kind of a... And then he's talking about his enemies, you know, tearing him in pieces. And then he says, if I've rewarded evil unto him, this was at peace with me. That's really something to think about. We do not want to stir people up that are at peace with us. Yes. You know? And that, and that is the, uh, that's the key. Uh, in the book of, in the, it's like in the Beatitudes of Matthew, uh, it basically is one of the key verses, um, Matthew 5 verse 22. But I say to you, that where should his anger without, with his brother without cause shall be in danger of judgment, and should ever say to his brother, Rekha, shall be in danger of counsel, but whoever shall say the fool shall be in the danger of fire. And then it's further on. Uh, yeah, that is... Yeah, that is the verse that comes to my mind because we got to make sure that if we, if something happens to us, we got to make sure that is there a fault or not. If it isn't, then it, and if it isn't, then we have every right to say, "Well, just like leave me alone." So basically, says that we I mean if you have no problem with anybody, to leave it at that. Right. If right. they have a problem with us. Tell them it's like make sure that it, it, it's a real, it's truly, uh, um, it is absolutely legitimate. If it isn't, walk and leave it alone. Yeah, and sometimes, you know, it's like in Second Samuel 24, uh, the 11th verse says, when David was up in the morning, the word of the Lord came unto the prophet. Go say unto David, Thus saith the Lord, I offer thee three things. Choose thee one of them, that I may do it unto thee. This was after um, David uh, disobeyed the command of God. You know, and um, he was told not to name the people, and he went ahead and did it. Yeah, yeah, and, and as a result, we see the judgment uh, falling upon on David and and uh, the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel from morning even to the time appointed and there died the people of Dan even to Bathsheba 70,000 men as a result of David's disobedience and well we should, we should be very careful that it's taking a sentence and inventory are two different things right, right. That's, we should make it clear so um so if one just wants to know like how much do we have in stores and everything, it's a different story, but it takes a sense of God's people, even though you already knew why why I do it. That's why even today I don't think I never take a sense. Yeah, that's a good point. That's yeah. a good point. Yeah, you like so even I mean I'll, I'll just take, here's an example. Um here in Canada every five years there's a census. And what they do is that you, and it says, I read, I read the call, under the Minister of Revenue, a part of the thing was statistics, basic income, age, like background, everything. And the funny thing is, they already know that via, via your income tax act, where they file. So here's a roundabout sort of way, they say, well, it's a lot of fill it out. And I said, well, hold on. Just because the safety of the soul doesn't mean you have to. So what I did, so what I did, I read the act. In learning myth, it's for population. It's, in learning myth, that in Section 4 of the Canada Act, it's one, it's voluntary, and two, is for population and agriculture. Okay. So, yeah, so I'm sitting here. So one reason is section, section 4. So it's for population and agriculture and it's voluntary. And you already know how much I make to begin with on, you already know everything. Cause after, in my requirements of file every year, they know all that stuff. Why am I filling the same, why am I filling the same commission of place for? Uh, 
just already know that. Why am I still in a place for so and so? And, like, I'm, and, and this actually, and, and every year, and this actually happens. So one day, I, I had this, uh, like one day, uh, from the statistics of Canada, what they did is that they had one person, they had a person literally go around all the apartment buildings and houses to, to get anybody to say, did you feel the income tax? Did you feel the, yeah, ah. But so, and I opened the door, all I see this lady showing this badge stating that, oh, I, I work for the, for the government of Canada at the Statistics Canada office. I'm sitting there looking at her. I don't know who you are. You just, you just dress up in a, apparently government individual and throw in a badge. I have no clue verifying it. And I said, no, of course, it's section seven of the Statistics of Canada, section four of the Statistics of Canada is strictly voluntary. Oh, okay. She left me alone. I haven't filled out since. Right. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. So what would be, so what we're describing is that we're not supposed to fill it. And yet this was in Psalm seven. It says that, look, if I did something wrong, I should be punished for it. Legitimately. Going into that word, it's like, don't, I don't. So he was, he was, it's, it's frankly, from one to eight, it's frankly honest. Right. So, and then the rest, and if it has been done wrong, and the enemies are conspired against me, the Lord just, just to help me. And, and you had mentioned, and you had mentioned about, um, uh, about the fair, God hardening the Pharaoh's heart. And we had mentioned to me, I had a hard time accepting it. Extremely difficult. So I read it, but I read this, and this came as one case, uh, it was the last week. Sometimes God, I mean, even though God's predestined everything and God has predestined a lot of, and through everything. Well, at this point with me, I found out sometimes God will harden a person, will harden your enemy's heart to get you out of a bad situation because you don't realize how much, how bad the situation is. Right. Yeah, that's a yeah. that's a good. In fact, that was one of the reasons why he hardened Pharaoh's yeah. heart was to get uh, to to redeem or to free the bondage that Egypt was under. Uh, the the Israelites were, but they didn't. They didn't, they didn't like, like think of it as if you don't know you're in a bad situation, how can you tell a person? Because they're they're so used to it. So what happens that like, sometimes God will heart because. It's like me telling a person it's a bad dude, and you're saying, no, he's not bad. And you're trying to warn him. So sometimes God would literally pardon the person's heart to wake you up, even though you're hurt, to get you out of a bad situation, to show what the person's really like, and at the same time, punish the person at the same time. Right, right. And I think it was last, it was a, it was a Christian, um, uh, there's a Christian male uh, individual who listens to you. He actually lives in uh, St. Louis, Missouri, to be exact. And he's more in the act, act of um, um, recovery and bringing people to Jesus Christ. But he was actually going through the book of Exodus. And he said, sometimes God will harden a person's heart to get you out of a bad, to get you out of a toxic situation. And I'm sitting there last week and I'm like, wow. Okay. That explains it. I didn't understand, Larry, I didn't understand the point until that was me. Right, right. Well, you know, he also, um, we're told, and we've talked about this before, but vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord, right? Yes. And so he does take vengeance upon his enemies. That's what he's saying there. David is praying in verse 6 arise O Lord in thine anger lift up thyself because of the rage of mine enemies yeah you know and I've had I don't know I'm sure you've experienced I know you've experienced it <laughs> I, I, I experienced it first hand but you experienced it from one person but vengeance you know come, you know we we're not to take vengeance but god yeah. god will take vengeance upon his enemies but it's, it's hard to sometimes it's, it's difficult sometimes 
Yes, it is. Oh, I, it, 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 oh, don't, don't tell me it's not easy. It, 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 it's not easy sometimes to, to, to walk away, especially knowing that you're so enraged you want to do it, but you have to walk away. Right. So, it, so and, and, and this is a lesson of, this is a lesson I'm still continuing, I'm still learning this day, personally. It's a lesson I'm still learning. So, with that, this particular first chapter shows you that, you know what, if I do something wrong, and my enemy, like, I'm, I haven't caused, and I'm, and I'm at peace, not a peace of my enemy, okay, if I'm, I'm at peace, I've done nothing wrong, the Lord, take care of it. Despite how my people react. And this is what the last, last, last half, Chapter study. Right. And even last night, I had to realize we have this thing of we want to help our enemies. We want to see justice in our lives. Lord, we just want to see people suffer. We want to see people go to jail. I had realized last night, you've heard the term karma, right? Right. Uh, okay. It's the terms from uh, Hindu and Buddhism, but again, I had realized the God could take a farm like the best way it was described, and I understand it, is basically cause and effect. Right. If you, yeah, if you, you hear somebody, you know, the the term on YouTube is instant karma. <laughs> you know, it's like yeah. when somebody does something stupid and then something happens right back to them, you know. Yeah. But you see, the thing is, sometimes we've got to realize it may not come into this. We may not see we may never see the person we may never see that person how God will deal with that person in their in their life. This is the thing we've got to this is the thing we've got to I've had to learn. Sometimes it's instant. Right. Instant. Sometimes it may take years. But we don't know what the person we don't know. Because the thing I've learned sometimes we'll go through that hurt to protect, God will use our hurt to protect us and teach us a lesson at the same time. And also use that situation to punish the person. So sometimes we, we, we can be completely removed from that situation. Completely removed. Not really well, or have to rethink it all, how me like this, or what's wrong. Sometimes a person will suffer for what they're doing, and it doesn't have to be in a court, it does not have to be in a court of. It'd be great if it is, it'd be great. We're going to jail. We think people love to see that. And I'm not saying it doesn't happen. But sometimes, they could be facing a cause or consequences without even, real, without even us realizing. And this is something I've had to, I've had to, I had to come to terms with. Because I don't know, like, I, I, I can't speak for anybody else and I'll look at my case. Sometimes, there are facts in our lives a lot more peaceful after the fact, and yet later on, we end up we end up finding out that the very same individuals, depending on the situation, will cause harm to it. You can always tell it's happened to me where sometimes I may see that person, they'll never admit, but they're they'll never admit it, but they got a heavy hand of so they got a heavy hand of uh, they got a heavy hand of vengeance from God in a way that they can. The moment, and it's happened to me a few times where on several occasions I'll, I'll literally hear about a particular case that I, that guy will tell me throughout like to third percent guy will tell me to a third party or just offhand or sometimes I'll see the person and, and I'm sitting there just like wow what and you see, you see this like it's like they can't they can't look they'll have to pretend that everything's okay and it's happened to me on a few occasions and I'm sitting there and like, wow, and my life is so peaceful. And there, you can tell that internal struggle that they're dealing with and God is dealing with. Them. Yeah, you know, in that passage I was referring to a while ago, just for people's benefit, is um, Hebrews 10, verse 30. Um, it, it says, for we know... Him that saith, Vengeance belongeth unto me, I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. You know, um, there's a lot of people that, you know, say that 
um, the Lord is not going to judge his people. But we, we're, we're told several places in the Bible where he does. Uh, and, and we see in eight, the eighth verse here, it says, The Lord shall judge the people. Judge me according to my righteousness, according to my integrity that is in me. Um, now, it is true that um, if we have been purchased by the blood of Christ, that we do have the imputed righteousness of Christ. And so, you know, that that's where the aspect of faith comes in over works. You know, it's not our salvation is, is not of works, but that doesn't mean that God will not, not only will he not check, chasten his children, but sometimes he does bring judgment upon his children. All right, hey, I mean, Larry, would it be safe to say you know I've been guilty of that over the years? Sure, I have. Yeah, sure. Oh, well, I'm glad I put my hand up. Oh, I've been guilty of that too. Sure. And I'll, and I'll honestly say, if a person's not, like, this is a distinct this is a distinction. If a person's not God's elect, they'll be the first one to say, yeah, I have screwed up big time and God is chasing me over this. You'll be the first to admit that. Right. And judgment, judgment works. Judgment, judgment is not always, um, like for an example, um, when he says in, um, verse, uh, 20, wait, verse 11 there, he says, God judges the righteous and God is angry with the wicked every day. So just because, and now this is, I've been on both sides of the aisle. Sometimes when God's judges us, uh, he's giving an assent to what we're doing. In other words, it's not always in a condemnatory manner, but sometimes it is. So. Yeah. yeah, I am not, uh, like, I'm not, disag- I'm not disagreeing on that fact oh. there, too. All right. All right. Yeah, so I, I, I'm, I'm guilty on both sides. I've done some dumb things in the past where I'm like, yeah, you're right. I should have been, I was, in a couple of cases, I deserve to be fired from the job. Right. And, I, and I, grew, I mean, it took me years to get to, to rectify that fact. So, yes, so when I say that, I've been just as guilty on the other side as well. Yeah, I'm glad to know that, I'm glad to know that God is a merciful God. If he wasn't merciful, if he wasn't gracious, we would, we. I'm sure you would agree. We would both be in a world of hurt, you know. So. Oh, we'll, we'll both be dead for that way. That's right. That's right. So th- this is why. So this is why I'm. Uh, uh, I'm very. I'm very. Car- I'm very careful to point. The, I'm very careful to point the finger. Because sometimes I was like, well, if you point one, the three point back at you. So I got to make sure my act is together first. So this is where, like, example is with my younger brother. I said to him, I said, look, don't make the same mistake I did. Don't. It's your life, your money. Don't make the same mistake. I did. This is what you need to do. So when I tell him that, I said, like, these are the blunders I've made. I'm being, being frank. So, but it's your life, your money. It's your life, your money. You're like this. So if you need help, like, I can assure you to advise you, but don't repeat the, don't repeat the same mistake I did. Right. I, I, I really, I really like the way the psalmist ends this particular psalm because, you know, if you, if you read it wrong, you could misinterpret really what the psalm is saying, but he ends by saying, verse um, 17, I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness. Okay, not according to not according to David's own righteousness. He's praising the Lord according to the Lord's righteousness. And so many people, you know, they they want to they want to claim their own righteousness and their own perfection and their own good deeds and their own sanctification and everything else. But you know. I can't do that because I know I know I'm prone to sin. I know my weaknesses, and yep. the only hope I have is in the righteousness of Christ, not in my own. You know, so. Yep, that is uh, that is true, and I and I, I and I have to check I have to check myself every morning. And as a Lord, just thank you for letting me wake up every morning. Right, right. 
Jeremiah, I think it's in Jeremiah where it says, His mercies are new every morning. You know, in other words, great is thy mercy. Great is thy, you know, and if if his mercies were not a continual, if, if he didn't demonstrate his mercies throughout our lifetime, if he just demonstrated them for a certain period and then just said, okay, I'm sorry, you're out of mercy now. <laughs> okay. You know, like I said, I would be in a world of hurt. Yeah. Know? Yeah, and that's the spot where, uh, and this is the spot where I'm at. I have to continue, continue to remind myself of that. And I have to admit, the book of Psalms is a good book. It, I mean, it, it, is. It, it, it helps me, like every time I'm going through a depressive state, I have to read this book of Psalms now. That's right. I, that's right. I, I decided, I, I'm not, I'm not putting this book above Jesus Christ's life or anything. Right, right. Or the book, uh, so, it just reminds me of this, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm just as frail as faulty as everybody else in God's work, except Jesus Christ. And here, here's a, he was a king and look at the stuff he messed up with. So, if, I mean, if he just king is this messed up, it's like, you know what, man, there's, there's so hope for me too. <laughs> that's right, that's it's right. Just, it's just like, wow, there's, here's a kid who really messed up like this and look what he, and look what he, and look what I still use him. You know, I mean, look at look at the prophet Jeremiah. I mean, Jeremiah, he was also called the lamenting prophet, you know, because he wrote the book of Lamentations. I'm looking yeah. in the fifth, third chapter of Lamentations. Listen, listen to Jeremiah. He says, I am the, I'm reading in Lamentations uh, chapter uh, 3, verse 1, I am the man that has seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. He hath led me and brought me into darkness, but not into light. Surely against me he has turned, and he has turned against me all the day. My flesh and my skin hath he made old. He hath broken my bones, and so on. And then as he goes on down through there, he says, uh, 17, And thou hast removed my soul far off from peace. I forgot prosperity. And I said, my strength and my hope is perished from the Lord, you know. But uh, then the great thing about it is, as he goes on down through, he says, and all of a sudden he has a recall of mine. He says in verse 21, this I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. Because his compassions fail not, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. So I'm glad that the Jeremiah didn't just stay in the doldrums, you know what I'm saying. So hmm. Yep. That 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 is absolutely true. And I'm I, I, I don't often have for a moment I'm just as guilty of it too. I always remember the negative side and then I have to remember what I God has blessed me with That's what right. I do with that. And I'm like, you know what? Most individuals will, like most individuals will, will, will kill to have something like this. That's right. You know, there's, I've often said, you know, you can't have faith without hope and you can't have hope without faith. Yep. And the, the remarkable thing is, you know, faith is a gift of God. It's something that's given to us. I, I in and of myself could not drum up something that I don't have, right? Yep. But, but if I've been given faith, then it demonstrates itself and becomes more evident that, you know, that I have been given the gift of faith because of how it, how it demonstrates itself you know, in my life, you know, and, 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 uh, not, you know, faith is a, a, a very interesting thing. When I began to study the origins of faith, it changed my whole modus operandi. Because I was always taught that, you know, I, people would tell me, oh, you gotta have more faith, you know? And yeah, that, but it's gotta be given to. You. That's right. If, if faith is not a gift, uh, because per, if a person is dead in their in their trespasses and sins, how can they do anything? I want to read this real quickly, and then we'll bring this down to kind of a closure. This is a poem I wrote, wrote, When Hope and Faith is Given. 
Hope like faith and repentance is a gift from God. When it is given, faith gives its nod. They are joined together, sent from heaven above. Do you remember the first time you had hope that Christ had died for you? This faith, belief, and hope was a gift. So true. We could never have faith, belief, or hope when we were dead in sin. This is the greatest evidence that we've been born again by the Holy Spirit who gave us these things, including repentance causing our heart to flee to Christ and then joy he did bring. Having assurance that Christ died for our sins is the greatest joy that could ever be, knowing that we are a part of the elect family, bought by his blood and adopted by him before we were even born, chosen to be ransomed from our sins. This is the greatest miracle that Christ did for me, adopting me into his family and dying on the rugged tree. This is my eternal song forever I will uh, sing. Thanks be to Calvary, I'm forever free in eternal life he did bring. And so that's... Um, that's my inspiration is, you know, like the, like the psalmist ends up there and saying all praises, um, go to the one, the, the righteous one, the, the perfect one, the one that's without sin, you know, so. Uh, but look at, um, where Christ still the tempest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like look at Peter, the more we could see, it's very easy to see. The moment Jesus Christ, the moment Christ walked on water, he had faith given to him by his father. Even though uh, Jesus Christ and Father are one with the Holy Spirit, but in human form, his faith was given to him by his father, so they were walking on water. Right. And my question, but yet the moment Peter took his, the, the moment Peter took, went on water, on water, and then he took his eyes off of Christ. He began to think. The okay. fact that he took his eye off of Christ, his own faith, his own, he had no faith, but yet the faith that was given to him. Right. And what was the right. first thing Jesus Christ said? You have little faith. Right. And, right. and he, had, he had to pick him up. He couldn't do by himself. Yeah. I'm glad to know that Christ is the one who, um, who plants the seed, who nurtures the seed, and who causes the seed to grow, you know. Yeah. And this is and this is why because the example of Paul he just met that was the first thing I thought about was this Christ still the tempted. It right. was an entire it, it was an entire faith on storm, storms of life, in one life and simple act of having faith. It was just given to you to place the storm. That's really true. You know. Yeah. That so the fact that Peter sank the moment he took us out of Jesus Christ means that the faith was given to him they were able to do that. And the Jesus Christ of the walk with you have little faith and he had to pick him up. It goes to show you human we like outside of God's elect, if we have no faith, our faith is given to us. The fact that he did that, those two acts right there. Christ Peter took his eye out of Jesus Christ, he was saint, and Jesus Christ had to go pick him up and he says, Where's your you have little faith? Yeah, I, I would uh, like to read this to, I promise this will be the last poem I read today. Uh, this kind of goes along with what you're saying. It's called Master of the Sea. Christ awed the disciples when on the boat they saw the wind and tempest tossing and the raging of the sea. Then Christ said, Peace be still, and it became calm as could be. Who is this, they said, that even the wind and sea obey him? The creator of the universe who had come to earth as man. Yes, he was fully God, yet he was fully man. But he holds the wind and sea in the palm of his almighty hand. So, well, listen, I'm going to uh, bring this to a conclusion. Any any final thoughts before we... Uh, 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 now, next time we'll be going into the eighth chapter of Psalm. Yeah. But I think this is just an affirmation that all glory... Again... All glory and honor goes to Christ. Any final comments, Eddie Nothing here. All right. Well, listen, I'm going to 